to that person in some manner. And that helps them withstand other things. Now, I don't want to be crude or rude, but suppose you were bombarded by rap all day long, you know, and you wanted to produce a sophisticated person in an environment like that. It would help to have some values from another, from a culture, whatever that culture is, that you could withstand that, uh, that assault. And I'm sure that someone from, a, whether Korean or a Chinese or Japanese background has that, has that. Some will not, but others will be able to deal with that. Uh, in the Afro-American world, it's, there's a notable difference of Afro-Americans who come here from Africa today and, and, and immigrate from Africa, and they really want to succeed. They really want to, they, they are not seduced so much by this uh, kind of uh, down pulling that, that some of that represents. The bitterness embodied, I'm not saying it's good or bad why it happened, but the bitterness embodied in it, uh, um, you know, it's hard for young people to deal with. But if you're from the West Indies, Jamaica, places like that, you have the British sort of uh, uh, a cultural strain that's been indoctrinated into you before you come here. I mean, you're, you're much more inoculated to that kind of thing than someone who just um, is born in the, in the environment here. So a cultural strain from a background is a, is a tremendous help, whatever that culture is, whatever, whatever produces in order to give the child or the offspring backbone. You know, it's very really important. Okay, so this is what um, Luzanta was saying about the, the Jews. Maybe going west is, wasn't a good thing, isn't a good thing for them. Maybe they should put their energies into this other endeavor. And this is what Herschel will pick up in his thoughts. This is exactly what Herzl will document, maybe it's 100 years later. If that, maybe it's only, it's 60 years later. And I think Herzl's father had already uh, been encountered some of these people, and uh, we will encounter it ourselves. Um, okay, now, before we go on to, so from now on in to the end of the term, we're going to deal with these different Zionist things. You say, well, it's all the same thing. What have we got to deal with? No, it isn't all the same thing. And the problems were, and they say, well, why don't you go on with the Jewish thing? Well, there's no real development in America of these things. I mean, we, we, we get it all grown already from what you saw from these various thinkers in Europe. And basically, that's where American Judaism is. And whether either the, they're losing people through assimilation or they're surviving in these in the forms that we have already studied. So we don't really have to deal with uh, any more of, of that. And I don't think the wave of the future is on the side of um, American and um, uh, European Jewry. American Jewry is fairly strong still. European Jewry was eradicated to them. A large extent, um, literally eradicated, and even in France today, the anti-Semitism is how it could possibly be after uh, whatever number you're willing to acknowledge. Six million is the general one. If you want to cut a million, if you want to cut a couple hundred thousand off one way or the other, you're welcome to do it. Uh, but the point of the matter is how people can can be like that in a country like France today is just after people were, were, were transported uh, in the literal hundreds of thousands and the French government did nothing back in those days to, to oppose the Nazi shipment of those people. Uh, um, it just, uh, it, it, it's just frightening to think that, they can, that that can start up again. Um, you know, there's no one left in Poland that it can happen to. Uh, basically, it's just when I went to Poland uh, some years back, people looked at me like I was from outer space, like I was from Mars. But, and that was the biggest Jewish community, over three million people. Anyway, um, so f there is, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say is that in Israel, like it or not, it may be wiped off the map uh, in the nuclear uh, holocaust that may be on the way because of countries like Iran and so on who are uh, uh, pairing these things as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, and uh, I would think, uh, I don't know if Israel is really their target or just a good propaganda tool to work people up into a frenzy and keep the thing going. Uh, but, uh, or if the real target is America or Western civilization, generally speaking. 
but it's great to keep talking about the eradication of Israel and the annihilation of the Jews and uh, the eradication of Tel Aviv and so on. And uh, it, it gets a lot of, um, it gets a lot of um, emotional uh, lift from the so-called streets in these various countries. And they get a lot of political clout in a pseudo-democratic society where there is no real rule of law, just, um, just um, uh, iconoclasts and people who pander to the um, crowd. I and mean, that's what Hitler was after World War I. You can't have a democracy if you don't have institutions. In these countries, Germany didn't have any institutions yet. So it's no good just to inflict a democracy without the institutions that go along with it that people honor and, and, and uh, care about. Look at Russia now. Putin is turning into right back into the secret police state again. Uh, only now it's just a gang of thugs who kill journalists when they feel like you take people's property, throw them into the gulag again take 20 billion, 30 billion, 40 billion dollars worth of uh, property, divide it up amongst the party members as spoil, and these guys go rot out in Siberia someplace. That's what's going on in Russia now, and the U.S. government puts a pretty face on it, talks of getting Russian cooperation. They ain't getting Russian cooperation for anything, unless they feel like it, and it's in their interests. Uh, the only Russian cooperation you're going to get is if they feel threatened and endangered by some of the things they see happening, but in the meantime, they're just going to uh, um, uh, try to, um, well, I don't have the right language, but muck things up, if you want to call it that. That's all that they're really interested in. Chinese situation is a bit different, because the Chinese, as we said, I think uh, sometime in a previous class, have an economic interest in America. They're selling things to America, whereas the Russians aren't. Uh, the Russians have nothing to sell to America. They're selling fuel to Europe, so they have a leverage there on Europe, but they're not selling anything to America. And the Chinese are, uh, are buying things from America and selling things to, uh, to America. So they're not interested in the collapse of this country. Not in, a, not in the short term, that's for sure. Uh, but So I don't know whether these forces are after Israel or a wider thing, and they just use the Israel thing because it's easier. So, if Israel is able to survive, then the future of the Jewish people, or whatever you want to call this entity of civilization, will depend on what goes on there. And so you can study the things that we're going to study here and see exactly the struggles going on today in Israel at the present moment, right out of these, uh, these arguments back in the uh, 19th century and 20th century. And it's all an intellectual thing. Once you understand the intellectual flow, you can just put people in the 